Ladies, if you want to lose weight, do this. Train and eat like a bodybuilder. It's the best step you can take to getting a lean body. This one I heard recently, because Adam said it. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to steal it. No. I thought you were going to steal it right there. <laughs> I did. I took it from you. I think I read that somewhere. No, I love that because it's true. It's so true. The last person you would think that you should eat and train like if you're a female who's overweight, wants to lose weight, is a bodybuilder, right? Bodybuilders are always trying to get bigger. So you think like, I'm not going to eat like those guys. But the reality is the high protein diet, the lifting weights, the, you know, bumping up calories. Trying to build muscle. Trying to build muscle, speed of the metabolism. It's exactly. Train like a linebacker. Yeah. It's, that one didn't take yeah. off. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's exactly what they should do. 100%. Yeah, and, and that's just it. I think that, and it seems so um, counter to what I think that that client would think, right? If yep. you, I can only imagine when I was a 23-year-old trainer and having a female client come in who was needed to lose 30 or 40 pounds. And I could have just imagined her purchasing training. And I said, okay, well, we're going to train like a bodybuilder. Yeah. <laughs> How that would go over. You'd have I'm to pretty, wait for the three-day cancellation yeah, period to be pretty, over first. Pretty sure that she'd be out the door right away. But that, I mean, that's the truth. The truth is that, you know, when you are in a position where you are trying to reduce body fat, lose a significant amount of weight, say anything over 20, 15, 20 pounds of body fat you want to lose, uh, you know, the, the, the best thing that you could possibly do to make that as easy and as sustainable as possible would be to speed your metabolism up. And it, in order to do that, it requires, for most people, meaning like 99.9% .9 of everybody, to increase their protein intake, um, eat in a caloric surplus, and lift weights trying to build muscle which is like a hypertrophy, right? Training like a bodybuilder. So, yep. and that is what's going to put that female client who wants to lose 30 pounds in the best position to lose those 30 pounds and keep it off for the rest yeah, of the Yeah, I'll say it differently. Um, would you rather be able to eat a lot and be lean or would you rather have to eat a very little amount to be lean, right? So that's what we're talking about is putting you in a position to where your metabolism is much faster. It's much more sustainable. And then you're also lean. And lean is different than just weight loss or weight, right? Body weight is measuring total body mass. Leanness, that's what we're all looking for. Like, who cares what the scale says? You want to be lean. You want to have nice shape. Uh, the scale lies all the time. I mean, you could be, you could weigh very little and be very flabby. You could weigh much more and look a lot leaner because muscle is extremely And then dense. you're just a lot more energetic. You're more active. You, uh, I mean, you're, it's much more enjoyable in that um, that state than you know the the other alternative approach where you end up just being fatigued all the time and you know you're just sort of begrudgingly going through the motion and trying to make sure you're still on. Oh track. my god, night and day difference. I mean, compare the two, the two, right? Uh, which the the common thought around the female client trying to lose 30 pounds is I'm going to cut my calories. I'm going to move like crazy, push my body till I can't go anymore. Uh, feeling when, so, and when you're eating like that, when you're eating, you're deprived of calories. And normally most people, when they cut calories from where they're currently at, they're also nutrient deprived. So you're not feeding your body the nutrients it needs. So it's going to, your energy level is going to be low. You're going to have a rough time sleeping. Your mood's going to be shitty. You're going to feel fatigued in your your workouts. You're inflamed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just uh, It's such an awful place. And then at that point, it's literally just like who can suffer the most, the longest, uh, to, you know, to, in order to try and reach this goal. Whereas if you go the other direction, mm -hmm. you are feeding yourself adequate nutrients that your body needs. So, and you're building muscle, you're not training to absolute failure and exhaustion. You should be leaving the gym and you actually feel like you have more energy than when you showed up there, which then in turn helps you sleep better at night, which in turn helps you have more energy throughout your day. It's better like hormone this, profile. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, it's, it's <laughs> night and day difference. Yeah. The, the, because, and by the way, we all made this mistake as trainers early in our careers. The, the difference between the success I brought to my clients, and there's a lot of factors that factor into this, but this was the main, was one of the main ones. The difference between the clients I trained, let's say the first seven years, and then the back, you know, whatever, 12 years or 13 years was dramatic. When I figured this out, before I figured this out, my statistics were like any other statistic you see with weight loss, right? Like my clients, so long as they were training with me, and following my meal plans, cutting calories, doing all this stuff, they would lose weight. Nobody kept it off. The, yeah. the fail rate was very high. In fact, if you look at the data, it's something like 90% or close to 90%. So people lose weight, but then they gain it back. 
almost 100% of the time, they'll gain it back. And How each, frustrating is that? And we're celebrating with them. Like, yeah, we got there. Yeah. And then it just comes oh, right back. I would lie to myself. I would say it's their lack of discipline. I never said to myself until the very end when this became painfully obvious, I never said to myself, like, I'm not setting up for setting them up for success. I, you know, I'm training executives. I'm training responsible, disciplined individuals in every other aspect of their life. And I'm the excuse that I'm making why they gain the weight back is they're not disciplined enough. This doesn't make any sense. Like what's going on? And what it was is I just, my approach was totally wrong. I made it unsustainable. The back half, when I figured this out, got their metabolism faster. We worked out less because it was more effective, not harder, just more effective. Everybody thinks more effective means harder. No, it means literally just more effective. My success rate doubled. Now it was never hundred percent because there's always a discipline component. There's always behavior changes. But I'm talking about 30, 40% would gain the weight back. A, a majority kept it off forever. That's significant difference from when I first started. And the difference was the approach. By the way, it's not just the muscle that burns more calories. Because everybody thinks, oh, you have actual more muscle mass. That burns more calories. That's true. That's part of it. But it's not a, it's not a direct ratio. Okay, so a pound of muscle doesn't just burn X amount more calories. Cause you're going to get, you're going to get knuckleheads that are going to go on and be like, well, this data shows that a pound of muscle only burns 15 calories or 30 calories or five calories, whatever study they pull up. That's not how it works. If you send the signal to the body to build muscle, you fuel your body appropriately. You get adequate sleep. You don't have any nutrient deficiencies, hormones are balanced. So in other words, you're doing this the healthy way. If you do this the right way, you do build muscle, but your body also becomes less efficient with calories anyway. In other words, the same amount of muscle that you have. You could have the same amount of muscle and your body can burn more or less calories. And the, the metabolism is so complex. There are so many different ways your body can try to conserve or try to burn more calories. One example is your body's ability to warm itself up. So you may find when you go low calorie, and if you really pay attention to this, this happens, you find yourself getting cold more often, right? This happens if you lose a lot of sleep too. If you have poor sleep, you'll find you're cold more often because not sleeping, not eating enough tells your body you're under stress. Your body conserves calories by reducing the amount of calories it uses to warm you up. So you start to feel kind of cold. Another one is you reduce movement throughout the day. They've actually tracked people. People don't even know this. They'll track people's movement. They'll bump their calories, reduce their calories. The person's movement will go up or down. And now how? Little things. Standing a little longer, <clears throat> tapping their foot a little bit more, moving the arms more when they talk. And those are just the ones we can measure. Then there's all these complex systems in the metabolism. I mean, if you were to look at what we understand about mammalian metabolism, it's almost nothing because it's so complex. Your body becomes more or less efficient based off of its signals. So it's really, really what you're trying to do is this. You're trying to create an environment where your body says, we can burn more calories, this is safe, and we need more muscle because we need strength. If you do that and you do it properly – then weight loss becomes a lot easier. It's so much easier to do it the right way than it is to do it the way that everybody else tries to do it, which is they fail. And who figured this out? Bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. Bodybuilders are the ones that figured this out because their job is to be on stage, okay? Now, I'm not saying do everything that bodybuilders do. They do a lot of things that are crazy too. They're like human labs. Yeah, but generally speaking, a bodybuilder's goal, and I know it's extreme, so I'm not talking about the extreme crazy stuff, so everybody relax. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you look at the goal of a bodybuilder, it's to get as, not as light as possible. Nobody cares how much a bodybuilder weighs. It's to get as lean as possible and preserve as much muscle as possible. The, the athlete in the world, and you, maybe you can label him an athlete, the, 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 the best athletes in the world that have somewhat figured this out are bodybuilders. And what do they do? High protein diet. They, they try to do what are called bulks, and there's a right way to do that as well. And they, they focus on strength training. There's a primary form of training. Now, they make mistakes as well, but that approach is superior to the typical approach, which is uh, I'm just going to go start running and I'm just going to start eating less. Mm -hmm. Like that is a that is 100% a recipe for failure. Oh, you will gain the weight back 100%. and it's not going to work for you. You just, uh, you were talking about um, like neat as far as like the tapping and like the things that we do subconsciously oh, yeah, yeah. that we don't even realize that we do. Um, and I, I, I guess I would throw this in this category, even though I'm actively making the choice to do that, but it, it's so subconscious that I don't realize it. Katrina and I were just talking about this literally two nights ago. Um, and, I, and I've brought it up on the show again. I just want to highlight it because it's like, you know, I've been doing this for over 20 years now. And I'm, I'm only now like really 
self-aware of how much this makes an impact on me and my life, my relationship, my, uh, as far as what I am as a, as a partner and a father, uh, in our household, it is so wild, uh, the, how I am at home movement wise and helping around the house after a day that I've lifted versus a day that I've yes. not, there is like a yes. direct correlation with, I, I got a lift in today. When I get home, it's it's a trip. I come home yep. and it's like, and if I see the house in disarray, I, I start, I straighten up, I take the trash out right away. Could Otherwise, you, you feel like a slug. Could you, it's like, a, but I don't even think about it. It's subconscious, right? Like, I don't even, I'm not like, oh, I need to go do this or, oh, I'm in this mood. And so I just do it. And then on the days, like, and I'm having that day today, like I'm feeling sluggish today. I didn't lift today. I'm tired mm -hmm. already. It's like, we're not even out of here yet. And I'm already, I can already envision myself driving home right now. This is what's making me think of this too right now. It's because I'm like, <laughs> I'm all irritated because I've been sitting too long. 100%. Yeah. No, no, I'm with you. Like, that's how I feel right now. And so that's what's, this is why this is, is you know top of mind for me right now is I'm going like I'm already oh man I can't I'm gonna put my feet up when I get home I'm gonna relax yeah. and it's such a trip like how much that impacts everything else and then also that impacts my relationship because when my wife I come home and I'm the guy who comes in and does the dishes and helps out and I'm playing physical with my son and I'm like going oh knocking out some things that she needed done around the house and it's like and I'm not even squawking about it it's no big deal like it's like it's crazy how much better we are and then the times when I come home on a day like this where I'm like oh I'm tired I don't want to do anything I don't feel like it's like it's a, and so the, the motivate and the reason why I'm sharing this is that it shifted the way I even am motivated about training because you it, see the other, the other, uh, well, influences. Yeah. And at what point, like there, and obviously we have people that listen to this podcast that have been, that have been lifting for as long or longer than I have at some point, the PR, you know, chasing the bodybuilding abs, getting on stage, proving I'm more ripped than the next guy running faster, jumping higher. Like, you don't care. Yeah, at, yeah. At, at, yeah, at one point you 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 tackle all that, yeah. and and I'm not taking away from how amazing it feels to be the most ripped guy there, or how amazing it feels to hit a PR on a squat or what that. Like those are all cool and all, right? Those are great, and those are all fun to train for and chase after. But you know, it takes a it takes a real level of discipline and consistency to hit those things. But to just say, make the choice of like, I'm going to go make sure I make get movement in and lift and do a couple things to create good physical activity, maybe get a little bit of a pump and get some blood flow going. Mm -hmm. Man, that doesn't take a lot of effort to do that and what an impact it makes on the rest of my Puts life. Puts you in a healthier state of mind. 100%. Oh, yeah. I totally, I, it's the same struggle, you know, and I notice it. And that's one of those things like I... I know now I have to, like, I'll go solve it. Like, I just know what I got to do. And like, I'll just go do specific movements or things to help, like at least set my posture, right. Like get my muscles, some stimulus. It doesn't necessarily have to be like that rigorous of a workout or anything. It just has to be like, I have to trigger that response and get my body like, uh, in a different state. So that affects my brain. It affects the way I think that affects the way I communicate with people. It's oh, just all it's, like this, this it, downstream effect. Dude, sleep too. Big time. Difference. Everything. If yeah. I, if I have a, a day when yes. I lifted that night, going to sleep and the way I sleep Much better. is like a whole different you, game. You know, this is the main, this is one of the main reasons. First off, this is the game. This is what you have to figure out if you want to be consistent long-term with exercise. If you only connect it to how you look and even performance at some point, that's going to, you're, you're not seeing the full picture and it's gonna be very hard to maintain. At some point that's going to, you're going to, that's going to decline. And at some point you're going to, you're going to capture you're all gonna, that. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Right. Sometime so, at one point you're going to, but when you see, cause it does positively when you do it right, affect everything, including your relationships and your work and your performance and your creativity and your sleep and your libido, like all those things. Once you start to connect it to all those things, it becomes so valuable in a real way that it's hard to, it's, it's hard to stop. Like, one of the reasons why I work out so early in the morning, one of them is it's easy for me to cons be consistent. You know, I've got kids, I've got work. If I do it at the end of the day, I'm more likely to not do it. Things can get in the way. So consistency is up there. But the second reason why I do it first thing in the morning is because it sets me up so well for work. Like what we do, right? We're on camera, we're doing the podcast. It requires a certain level of energy and creativity and fluency you know, I'm not working at a desk where I could kind of be lazy and tired. Like, you know, we're doing a show, so I got to feel good. 
it's a very strong, like I've connected it. Like if I work out before we do this, way better. If I don't, way worse. So it's a strong motivator for me yeah, yeah. because of those things. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think it's important. And the, obviously the point of us bringing this up or why I started this conversation is that um, I don't care what your current goal is, um, you know, and, and hopefully everybody reaches whatever their current goal is. Uh, at one point you want to evolve to a place that you've now attached it to these other things that are are, are normally bigger than those goals. Totally, yeah. Right? Because like you said, like nothing wrong with chasing a squat PR. Nothing wrong with trying to run faster. Nothing wrong with trying to get on a bodybuilding stage. Nothing wrong with any of those things, right? But when you learn to connect it to, I'm a better father, I'm a better husband, I'm a better coworker, business partner, I'm better at my craft. You know what I'm doing? I'm in a better mood. I'm a better human. Like, and like, I get more stuff done. Like, I mean, when you start, I sleep better, which that has another trickle down effect from there. Like okay. when you start making the connection to all those things and then it re reframes your approach. Like it doesn't always have to be this. I'm chasing something crazy or I got to crush myself. It actually makes your like, workouts more appropriate. Yes. Mm -hmm. It then becomes like the Justin saying like, Hey, I, I know what I need to do. I know how many movements I need to do to get that blood flowing enough to get those benefits. Like I don't have to go. I mean, I love an hour workout with a great pump and, you know, felt like I pushed, the, pushed some levers and moved some stuff. Like I love that, but it doesn't actually take that to reap the benefits. I just said, I can get a great night's sleep, be a great father, great husband, be productive at home and actually just do a handful this, of movements that I just, I just get going and get some blood flowing. This is That'll why, do it. this is why I, I say that, um, <clears throat> that fitness you could loosely put nutrition in there, right? Fitness, nutrition. Those are amazing vehicles for, for growth because everybody listening right now or everybody in the world, you are a better human if you're more fit and healthier and you are a worse human if you're less fit and less healthy. That's just the bottom line. Everybody can improve in almost all aspects by simply becoming a healthier person. Now, of course, health is a large category. It's not just athletic performance and movement and diet. It's also emotional health, spiritual health, and the like. But if you're healthier, you're better. If you're less healthy, you're not so good. That's the bottom line. I think I think our our space though has really has has skewed that um that perspective for most people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like w what mo the average person would define as healthy is like this ripped cover model looking person. You and know what's the, funny too? The is, truth is that person is so out yes. of balance yeah. and obsessed <laughs> yeah. to, to look like that that they're yeah. okay. They're You're sacrificing you, from, a, from a physiological place. Yeah. They might be some probably healthy, which some of them are, aren't even there, but on a physiological, they are, but maybe you know, emotionally relationship wise, all these other things are, are out of whack because they, they're so focused on that. Most of us that have, have pressed that level. Okay. And I can speak to this cause it's, I'm, I was this right. Like we're driven by these deep rooted insecurities that drove you to be that obsessive about obtaining a look and you did it and you, and it's tough because then it's this self-fulfilling thing where I do it and then I get praised for it. And, mm -hmm. and, and then I get put on a pedestal for like, I'm an authority or I'm amazing or I ever, Oh, I want to be like that. Or I want to look like that. And it's so crazy. It's like, dude, you don't even realize no. that that's not truly what health is should kind of no, look the like. leanest that the leanest I've ever gotten. I was definitely not the healthiest for sure. Not the healthiest, probably in my whole active career. I would, you know, when I got down to like, what, what I don't know what I got down to 3%, 4% body fat, I was probably at some of the worst physical health because of the things I had to do in order to accomplish. Now that. I do believe though, there is, there's tremendous value in intermittently taking the body to the, some of those extremes sure. though. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't, don't, don't think this is me justifying someone to be, oh, this is for, you know, me justifying being 15 to 17% body fat year round. Like, no, I, I don't think know about 3% <laughs> for a guy, but I think it's, I think it would be smart for a, to, a guy who's consistent to try to get to single digit body fat and for, for a woman to get to that's right I the high mid teens, just to, just to see what it takes. I think and, a healthy place yeah. for a man to sustain most of his life, most of the time is somewhere between 11 and 15%, yeah, maybe not, 17, depending on the true. genetics, right? So 11 to 15, we're going to say, give or take is a, is a really good place to maintain. Yeah. And then you occasionally dip into the single digits and reap the benefits of that. And very rarely you uh, allow yourself maybe to go higher than 15%, mm -hmm. but you always kind of keep yourself totally in that, in that place, never allowing yourself to really go to any major extremes. To me, that's probably the healthiest version of, of you. Totally hundred percent.
Today's giveaway on YouTube. The program we're giving away, Maps Symmetry. Very popular program. Here's how you can win it. When we post this here on YouTube in that 24-hour period, that first 24-hour period, put a comment underneath. Make it a good one. And subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. That enters you to win Maps Symmetry. One more thing. We got a huge promotion going on this month. It's January. Everybody wants to work out. So here's what we did. We put together workout program bundles. That's two or three or more programs put together. And then we discounted them massively, literally $300 to $350 off the price of each of these bundles. Here's what they are. New to weightlifting bundle, body transformation bundle, new year extreme intensity bundle, and then body transformation bundle 2.0. If you're interested in finding out more or signing up, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. All right, are you, Adam, we brought up on the show, Justin and I, who are the uh, you know, we, we're up to date. <laughs> we're up to date on weird stuff. Yeah. Okay. Last time we talked to you. Weird authorities. We talked about the Miami mall. Oh my God. This is still going. No, 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 no. It's not oh. still going. That's just the last thing we brought up. Oh, like, okay. like okay, it you. was crazy. Lots yeah. of eyewitness accounts of beings or aliens or something. Oh, okay. Nobody knows. No video okay. of anything. Okay. A hundred cop we just, cars. We just want you to pay attention. Just, us. just, that yeah. just happened. Just pay attention. Okay. I'm telling you, 2024, by the way, is, by the way, by <laughs> the way, off with a bang. by the way, do you guys know, because do you guys know what year uh, in the original Terminator, when the war starts, <laughs> like when, when, when the it? machines take over and there's a big nuclear war uh, is and, it coming up? and Reese comes back in time, he's like, ah, 20, I'm assuming 2024, 2024. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, so check this out. James Cameron knew. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. I'm just gonna, I'm I think just, he's part of the Illuminati. I'm pretty sure he's been labeled. Bro, I mean, this trip is, off this. This is crazy. Now it's all over X. I'm sure by the time this airs, it'll be all over other social medias. By the way, X has become, you know, formerly known as Twitter, is becoming the social media platform where you're going to get all the stuff nobody like else wants to cover. Breaking news. Yes, because yeah. it's obviously blocked in other places. But anyway, there was a, what's it called? A, uh, it's not a synagogue. It's a, chab uh, chab yeah. what's the word, Doug? Anyway, um, it's kind of like a synagogue in New York City, and it's it's it, it is one of the main hubs of the of this particular sect of the Jewish religion, and Chabad. Chabad, they found tunnels going from underneath to other places, and there's video of police going in, trying to go in the tunnels, close them off. The you know the 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 people who congregate there. They look like Orthodox Jews were like rioting. Don't do it. Oh, that, I did what? see the rioting and then throwing a bunch of wood pews and stuff like that. Yes. Like, what was yeah. that all over, bro? Now they're saying their argument is, and here's where the conspiracy theory weird yeah. shit comes. Where up. do these uh, tunnels lead? Yeah. Okay, they're like, oh, we built those tunnels during COVID because you guys wouldn't let us go from one synagogue to the other. Uh, the evidence shows that the, that the tunnels were built after COVID, just six months ago. So like, yeah, right, not true. There's okay. also video of officials and people trying to pull things out of the tunnel to hide them, including mattresses and baby carriers and weird shit like that. And the mattresses had like weird Dude. soiled stains on them and stuff. And there's video of this. So there's all this speculation that it was like this human trafficking weird shit that was going on. In this tunnel. And it's like, it's like, now oh, yeah, I know the yeah, conspiracy yeah. theorists went nuts with it. Well, yeah. I mean, isn't it believable though? If, okay, if it was true that they couldn't go from synagogue to synagogue back in COVID, that after COVID happened, that we would get together as a congregation and say, here's the deal. If this ever happens together, right. we're not going to allow this to happen. So yeah. let's build these tunnels so we can. It's a good cover I'm story. starting to believe Adam's Illuminati. He always goes on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> He never wants to go I just, along. I don't know. Want to get, I'm just drawn to logic. I'm always you know what like, what they saying? saw aliens. I'm just, I'm just you think it could be that I'm they just, thought they saw aliens. Just drawn to logic. How many times can you play devil's advocate before you turn the devil? <laughs> yeah, That's what I want to know. Um, Adam, if you peel your face off at some point, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I've never even, I, I've never even heard them being connected to trafficking. Are they being connected to trafficking already? Like, why would that even be? An, an, uh, there's a lot of old stories and stuff, but who knows, right? Who knows? I, but what's weird to me is that they were pulling out like mattresses and I shit think out that, of these tunnels. And the mattresses had like- There's a whole world great. that we just don't realize. And, and that, for me, the, it just like, if you keep looking, it's it's almost, it's it's terrifying. So if, if you look at like uh, national parks, for instance, and you just look at all the statistics and data of people that have gone missing in national parks, like every single national park in America 
and they found so many different tunnels, yeah. so many different yeah. uh, ways that people have had access to like traffic people out. And so they're, they're starting to kind of, uh, you know, put two and two together. Like this was a hot spot for people that would like snatch kids, take them and, and usher them off, uh, you know, to be trafficked somewhere else around the world. Okay, and it's so like, it's so crazy. This particular spot so by where the way, New York go, City. If it just goes from one synagogue to the next, how's that really, how you- That's what they yeah, say. I don't know what, uh, but they uh, haven't seen it. So- I don't know anything about this. Yeah, so- and this is what I'm seeing right now. Obviously, like, wouldn't recording. it need to be have like a tunnel to like a a, a, a bay or like a or an airport or something? They had, so they still haven't gone into detail right. uh, on where the tunnel goes and what the like exact shipping yards or whatever. They just and, like, and, and I'm more fascinated by how does someone build tunnels like that that fast? I know. Like, what do you got? What do you I, got? They could. I don't know. Un, but and, this this particular spot and location apparently is a headquarters for some of the most influential people in the world that will meet there from all over the world. So that's what the speculation is. Like, uh, what's going on? What are they doing? Oh, wow. Well. I know. Well, I mean, I'm not, I mean, you, my cackles perk up if it's the same people that are on the fucking list for Epstein are also <laughs> meeting there. Like, that's a little too close to like yeah. all this. To the it's table. almost like all the dirty laundry of the world is going to be like revealed this year, I feel like. You know, like, it, was it that big interview with Cat Williams? Oh, yeah. yeah. kind of brought that up. That? I haven't watched, dude, it's two hours and 45 minutes. It's so a you lot. watched some of it, right? I've watched He's a ton throwing. of clips. Person after person under the bus. And he's saying Illuminati. He's saying- So, okay. So, help me understand. You guys, uh, I, I said it, and I knew Doug knew the name. I think Justin knew the name right away. Uh, Mensa? Mensa. Mensa's yeah. a, yeah, it's-, it's You have to like have a high IQ. A level, genius yeah. level almost. So, so tell me- uh, I think uh, 120 is the IQ for that. So, I mean, uh, is that- Do you apply for it? Do you- How does you someone- You take a test. You I take mean? an IQ test. Yeah. So, like, anybody partner. can take an IQ test, and then and then if it, if you reach- If you hit a certain level of it, you're, you're, cons you're uh -huh. considered- Something like that, I uh, think. Okay. Yeah, yeah I so, know one person like that, and he is brilliant. So, Google Cat Williams and see if- I heard Thanks, that Justin. he's- He is- uh, I heard he's you. part of that. <laughs> I heard he's- I heard he's Mensa, which- You don't take tests. To me, that's the part that adds credibility to a lot of the stuff that he's saying, if he's got this really high IQ, because of course- all the people that he called out are, you know, trying to discredit him. Oh, he does drugs, or oh, he's a whole. Yeah. He's a what did uh, what did um, uh, what's his name? What's the comedian that he came after? Uh, say? Oh, Kevin uh, Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah, Kevin, Hart. Yeah, Kevin Hart. So, you know, that, that was asked like why he hasn't said anything about it, and he says, "Do you do you uh, do you engage with the circus, or do you just watch the circus, or whatever?" Like that's uh, a, so everybody's like just like dismissive. Yeah, dismissive or trying to discredit him. Nobody is really trying to like argue what he's yeah, saying like battle, or or like come back at him and tell him all the bad things he's done right, right. like like there's no dirt they're slinging back at, at him which is interesting yeah so i i find that so interesting what too. was he saying what did you see in the clips he's just saying that like it like there, there's there's in hollywood that their illuminati exists and is real and that like almost all these actors and actresses at one point have this opportunity to choose one way or the other good or evil and they and and he gave he started dropping names of situ and he's telling it like this. All these stories I'm telling you are firsthand. This is I experienced these. These aren't me saying I heard. Yeah, it's like he's saying like me and Ludacris had this option. Me and Kevin Hart were in this situation. Me and so like he's he's he was dropping all of this dirt on people that this he, isn't the first time. I mean, you guys remember uh, there was an actor. I think he, he had this like exclusive that got buried, like his his interview. But I mean, the the guy that was um, responsible for Robot Chicken, oh, like, he yeah. threw him under the bus. Like he threw a bunch of like Hollywood actors under the bus for a lot of this stuff for going through rituals. That, you that know, it seems like were, he is, like, and he apparently has an IQ of one hundred Did you look up to see if he's part of Mensa? Oh, According to this, smart. yeah, see, that's smart. Wow. Wow. Oh, he's really smart. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you cannot read a book by its cover, huh? No, I did not know that. I, didn't, I, I used to I used to love Cat Williams, so I love his stand up. But yeah. his stand up, he does not come off. He doesn't like, come off like he's not a comedian. He's sharp and witty. Yeah, he's though, not always. a he's like, not a yeah, Chappelle, though. He's not like he's not right, right. he's like and he's not a yeah. political like guy who's like dropping like really subtle and like he's got pretty straightforward comedy. You yeah, know, it's yeah. funny, it's yeah. good. Like I love his stuff, but I had no idea he was that intelligent. Wow. Yeah, but I I mean for everyone that's trying to discredit him, you got to give him some sort of credit then for being that level of intelligent. Like, that's, well, intelligence doesn't mean integrity. You're right, right. but it still, though, it, it yeah, means but, something. Uh, it, it, intelligence doesn't mean integrity, but he's literally telling stories about his integrity. I was going to say that's his <laughs> entire interview yeah, about his integrity. That's exactly what it is. It's like I passed up millions yeah. of dollars 
and, and 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 chose the the other way versus where everybody else tends to go. Well, like, so. I mean, uh, okay, if if this is true, if it is true that there are people that try to control things, then they're going to look at the most influential aspects of the world, and entertainment is at the top. So is the news. But so here's here's so here's the thing that uh, you look up Operation Mockingbird. If this is if this is true, I feel like. You know, and of course, you know, how do I say this without, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove ourselves from this conversation. Okay. Uh, Logan Paul's and like your other big YouTube yeah. podcast influencer type people, the future is, they're the, gonna be, they're sure. the most influential people, sure. right? So at one point- They'll get captured. They will be, or, or we should have some firsthand stories ourselves of hearing stuff or seeing stuff if that's if that's the future. So let me ask you this. Let me first off, do you know what Operation Mock Mockingbird is? Yeah, you've brought this up before. Yeah, large scale program in the United States CIA, CIA. Yep. that began in the early years of the Cold War and attempted to manipulate domestic American news media organizations and prop for propaganda purposes. It's a real thing that where they they try to get into the news to use it as a way to uh, propagandize Americans apparently they stopped and doing this. This is where the trillions of dollars I brought up last time. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean we're just. I'm not gonna. Going? I'm not gonna name drop, but we were at a in Cabo. We were with somebody who quit working for the new a major news network outlet because they were influenced. And she said exactly that all during COVID that they had a script, a script to read. I know. So, I mean, that I mean, that's famous been, video that they showed where yeah, everybody cited the, the same exact yeah. lines. That was the creepiest video how, I've ever seen. How weird would this be? Right, so I don't think we're anywhere, you know, near big enough. Or maybe, maybe if we are, they know. Like we ask those guys, they're gonna tell everybody. But let's just imagine, like something happens, we go real big. Oh my God, mind pumps huge, and then like someone walks in. All right, guys, like you guys are pretty influential. So I got a deal for you, and starts telling us, what do you guys do? Do we just beat the shit out of them right away, or do we? <laughs> what do we do? What do we do? Do we play well, along? I mean, escape. Like you're, you're what you're bringing up. I would is, be, I would be terrified. You're, you're, what you're bringing up is my them. is is my point. Is that. Uh, we are moving into a in, an era where Hollywood is not influential anymore. I mean, your kids do not give a shit about Tom. Yeah, Hanks, but that doesn't mean right? they won't capture uh, social media got people. That's what I'm trying to say yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm saying that, that, that they're happen. going to come I'm after. Sure it's already happening. They're going to come yeah, after but, social media influencers, yeah. YouTubers, podcasters, because that's the future of influence. And so it's only a matter of if this is true, is what I'm saying. Yeah. That it's only a matter well, of time doctors, before we should have firsthand experience yeah, of it, funded it, by like big uh, soda companies and you know and like all that stuff that kind of got revealed. Like there's people that are still just like the, the moral ethics side of it is a little bit like there's gray area there. You know, like they'll make decisions, and so it's like a matter of time before even bigger companies I, like well, that's okay. Them. So I mean, there, there's there's a couple things that we're talking about that are different here, right? Like. And I've already thought I've already admitted with you guys when it comes to these conspiracy theories. When there's a bunch of money behind this, like I'm on board. Like that it's fucking yeah. absolutely. Money is a very powerful motivator for people to manipulate, to cheat, to steal. To I mean, that has been happening since the beginning of time. So the the opportunity for somebody to create things or do things to manipulate the the media or ma manipulate groups of people so they can make more money i i'm all bought in on that sure when we have but weird, why wouldn't they use the same tactics for what for i mean if, for if you have uh, a nefarious intent why well, I, I mean like control power yeah power, why wouldn't the people also that want power ultimate power not use businesses you know the best case for what you guys are saying is that when once you once you're at a level financially you're not money doesn't isn't no you want power you want power yeah. and, right. and control over people and so that's the best argument for where you guys go for which is this like you know there's have you guys ever puppeteer been a, who's doing a lot you of you ever this been stuff. in a situation like that like when I, one th one time when i was a kid <laughs> and when you're in a situation like this it's you know you think you know what you would do but when you're put in that position it's actually quite difficult. So when, when I was a kid, I remember we had these neighborhood kids uh, that I would hang out with and they weren't, they were a bit of a rough crowd, but we'd hang out and I was, I you, thought I was cool by hanging out with them. You took the candy? No. Oh. I went out, we went somewhere <laughs> and they wanted to break into cars uh -huh. and I was with the group mm -hmm. and it was a bunch of dudes and I was with them and they were all like going to do it and laughing. And I remember being like, what the hell do I do? I had I a similar do? experience. So what I literally did was I lied. I literally lied. And I'm like, I got to go, guys. It's late. Yeah. My mom's going to get mad. And I made up an excuse and I took off. 
because I could feel the pressure. Like, what do you do in that situation? Well, I mean, yeah. I've, I've told you my story of the the paintball situation. I yeah. got I got hung up with that. You know what I'm saying? I got and I was the one who took the the fall for that. Yeah. Now at that age, uh, I you know. Of course, I did. Looking back, it's like, oh my god, look what we did. You know, what I'm saying like, it was so bad, right? And then obviously, when I met the families and I had to go talk to the the parents of the daughters that my friends shot yeah. in the doorway and like how true with the paintball gun, yeah, real quick, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, know, I guess the whole, that's right. The whole, I should tell a little bit. It was not a the short bit of version of the story <laughs> is that I was a she got shot. Yeah, out of which I was a sophomore in high school. My my friends and I, we were actually a Friday night playing video games at the house and. One of my but one of my best friends has had an older brother who was a senior, and they rolled up in their suburban with their paintball gu paintball guns, and told us to get in the car. And let's go. We're gonna go around and we're gonna we're gonna go shoot some people up with the paintball guns. And we're just like a bunch of young sophomore kids being influenced you be by. Cool. Yep. One, yeah. Okay. And we're not agreeing that we're gonna do it. We're like, sure, we'll come along. And so we climbed in the back of the suburban and went around looking for people and coming up on people that were walking on the streets. And then once it got so late that nobody was on the streets anymore, we decided to go to doors that we knew or people knew of like, Oh, that's so-and-so he lives there. Let's go knock on their door. And we knocked on a door to a house that had a daughter who was the same age as my little sister's age, who was at that time, uh, eighth grade. And so it was an eighth grade girl who answered the door at like midnight. Bro, saying this as a father now. Oh, I know. Do you, do you just feel like, whoa, what I mean, did I do? I mean, uh, as a as a father now, and knowing that if that was my daughter or my oh, son, no. that I would yeah, I would chase the suburban down, and boy, those boys would not look like <laughs> for me to catch them. So, and I get it, you know, as a sophomore uh, kid at that time, and then of course as a kid, you're thinking like, oh, I didn't do it, so it's not. You, you know, start to make excuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. start to justify. So that's yeah, you know, it's really easy that you can get sucked in and, and pulled into a situation like that. That hindsight, you go, oh my god, what was I thinking? So that crazy. was awful. You yeah. had a situation, Justin. Oh, yeah, it was like some guys that were I was hanging around with. I didn't really know a couple of the guys, and, of course, they're the ones that, like, wanted to do all the crazy stuff and steal stuff from people. And um, I was just kind of hanging out and rolling, and uh, we were walking through the neighborhood. And so I was in a neighborhood where there was a lot of houses that were, like, cabins that were, like, seasonal. And so, you know, you, I knew certain people weren't there, and my other friend knew, uh, and we were just going to walk through and these guys wanted to break in and then so they started just breaking in, broke, bust the door open, walked in there. And, I'm, and I literally at that point, I was just like so conflicted. I'm like, dude, I was like, I can't be a part of this. And I just like took off, you know, and left everybody. Uh, but it was just like, it's I, hard. It, 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 yeah. Cause now I'm ostracized. I felt like, mm -hmm. you know, they're calling me mama's boy and all this stuff for a while. That really <laughs> pissed me off. Like, that was like my trigger, dude. Like somebody call me mama's boy, you get hit in the face. I'm laughing because you said that before. <laughs> <laughs> they used to call you mama's why do people call you mama's boy because they, I, I think somebody along the lines because he's obvious when he gets mad and that's all because, it took, exactly. it, took one, it took one friend to call him that see how he reacted that's it's such like, a weird insult check I'm yeah, gonna call someone him someone called me mama's boy it's, like whatever exactly bro because it's like I try to do the right thing that's because you, you know? embrace and when it, I do the right why. thing people call me a mama's boy because it's like you know oh like you're so you know, you're a goody two shoe whatever right <laughs> and, and so you have to remember to call him that when yeah, they were yeah, yeah, well, well, damn <laughs> piss him off well such a mama's my boy, mom bro. and I have had you know our run-ins too and at that point you know I, I didn't want to be associated I'm like no you're first of all you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> second of all you know like I'm not hey speaking I'm of not goody two shoes you know hey, hey speaking of stealing in cabins you just remind me of another story when I was a kid this was this was a good this is not as bad of a prank as the shooting people with paintballs we used to where there's places that we used to go camping one of our favorite pranks to do is to go like when you're in a campsite area there's normally like two or three public restrooms yeah. in the area and at like i don't know right right around seven o'clock or eight o'clock we'd go around all the bathrooms and we'd steal all the toilet paper what? out of it <laughs> and such, we, a, such and, a teenage and then, boy thing to do and then we would then we camp out in the trees uh, and just wait for people to watch and listen for them to go shit and get uh, and uh, yeah you would hear them there you'd hear them like bro, you hear the things like <laughs> opening like scrambling can for i like, tell you Hey, I'm, this is this is repentance, right? This is what I, this is. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna repent right now. For, for, I would I didn't do it, but I was a part of it. Uh, Same thing, public bathroom. <clears throat> Me and my buddy went to, we were going to the bathroom. We we're both, you know, pooping at the same time. So we're in the stall next to it. And he goes, "Hey, watch this." And he just poops on the floor next to the toilet. Wow. And so we're crap, we're cracking up. Oh we think it's so God. funny. It's such a teenage boy thing to do. You know what? As an adult man, as a Disgusting, father, an dude. adult man. What a 
oh, terrible. What are you? What kind of person are you? Yeah. And then we're laughing because we're like, oh, the guy's gonna come clean it. He's gonna have to clean. It's so it. fucked up, bro. What a fucked yeah. up. What is That's wrong up. with the teenage Mine's male way brain. better. Mine's yeah, a way better. Teenage, yeah, mine was bad. Yeah. Sucked, yeah. I mean, the worst thing that's gonna happen to my person is they're gonna have to wipe their yeah. hand, use their hand, and my they wash friend, it off. Like, some so. poor guy who's a porter or a woman, probably <laughs> yeah. dude, is gonna go in there. He probably looked at. He's like, God damn, man, not today. Freaking kids. God, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what a shitty kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, I feel so bad for. I wish I could take it back. Yeah, I can't. Anyway, did you guys see? Are you guys seeing the the feud that's happening right now between the billionaires, Elon versus Mark Cuban? Yes. Oh my God. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my God. It's, it it's started funny to me to watch. The, it started over, what's it called? DEI? Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, yeah, Okay. And Elon is like, no, they have to be based off of merit. And Cuban is making the argument, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. So Elon is posting videos of Mark Cuban doing the whole like, you know, like, oh, forgive me. I know I'm a bigot. If I see, a, a, you know, a, a, <laughs> if, oh, there was an old video of Mark Cuban no, saying I it. I saw a, it. Yeah. yeah. And he's posting it's, it. And literally Elon said, Cuban is a racist. By the way, Mark Cuban is on X and they're yeah. doing it to each other and Elon owns X. I have to tell you guys, there's nothing I love more he than billionaires. better than anybody. I love billionaires going at each other. It's just the funniest thing in the world. I love it. Like <laughs> yeah. little kids. No, I mean, they are just with lots of money. You yes. Know what I'm so, I mean, we talked about this whole, remember a long time ago, like there's so many things. I wish maybe somebody can recommend a book because I would love to read a book on this. I bet there is countless stories where billionaires have fucked with other billionaires just and, for the sake of it like like weird shit like this like you're, let's pretend you're a billionaire i'm a billionaire yeah. and we, we're feuding and stuff like yeah. that and you of course if you're a billionaire you probably have 30 50 companies remember when we were talking to mark mastroff and i asked him how many companies he yeah. has he's like i don't even know how many companies yeah. i have right yeah, right yeah. you get to that level you have 100 That's companies just running it yeah, right right yeah. but you know and, and then within those companies you've got probably a cousin and an aunt a mother who runs it you've employed all your family and friends and like it's connected to you like that right but you whatever you don't care about it it's running but then like like I go do some shit where I buy it, you know what I'm saying? Or I buy the competitor and put it out of yeah. business, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Or I buy it and then I fire your mom, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know that shit. <laughs> fire your mom. Yeah, dude, you know that shit happens. That would be hilarious. You know that, like, and you know, they got so many moving parts. They're so busy. They're not thinking about one of their hundred companies that their distant cousin, you know, is running or oh, like that. And you know, that's got to happen oh, it's, all it, the yeah. time. They get nasty too. Yeah, Who is the family... Is it the Hearst family that had all the newspapers at one uh -huh. point? Yeah. The Hearst family had had lots of newspapers and were competing because they had paper mills. Mm -hmm. Were competing with hemp factories that were producing paper out of hemp. Mm -hmm. So the way that the Hearst family got rid of them is they started printing propaganda, propaganda pieces, pieces yeah. in their newspapers about marijuana and the immigrants are using marijuana and then they want to come after your women. And he would yeah. print all these propaganda pieces because they own news state news uh, newspapers. Yeah, yeah. To get marijuana to be illegal to put his competitor out of business. Yeah. Crazy. Well, when you that's have that, true. Well, that's the other thing. You have when you have that kind of money. Another thing you could do, like let's say one again, one of your examples, one of your businesses. <laughs> I'd fly a blimp over your house. I mean, you know that you know. I Justin could. Sucks. I could. <laughs> I could take. Up, oh. uh, I could take a. <laughs> Ten million dollar loss on you. my food and beverage company that competes with yours, just to put you, just out, of to put you out of business. Know. You know what I'm saying? And then I raise the price as soon as you're out of business. Wow. Like, I mean, you, there's got to be somebody who's got have collected all these stories, and I know that happens all the time where there's that that shit that because and that again back to our original point of once you have all this money, it becomes a power move. It becomes you're totally. more you're more which really that's yeah. I mean, gain, you're you're a billionaire. Gain, gain or lose ten million dollars. Look at all of Soros's moves. Yeah. Oh like, let's, God. Let's add the all those up yeah, that guy. yeah. i mean that's just that's, into it. that's cuban and uh elon though right now is is literally that you know yep. is, is just them going back and forth i i shared the one that he sh he made the comment about the uh, diversity and inclusive thing or whatever and he said and obviously he sold the maps but it was still funny oh yeah he made, he made the comment about uh he's like you should have a sh he's like well if you're so inclusive uh i'll believe you when you have something like i'll believe you when you have a short asian woman no no he, he it was the oh babylon b made a meme of what's the guy from game of thrones Oh, the, yeah, the, Peter Dinklage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that what his name? That's, a, that's, that's his the real actor. Name. Yeah, 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 that's his. That's his name. He made him saying that he should hide. The, they said that they, the, the Mavs. Yeah, yeah. He's the new power forward for the Mavs. Or <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Hey, speaking of successful companies, did you guys? Okay, I think we might have talked about this already. Butcher Boxes giveaway. So they every month they do a giveaway. When don't they have an option them. this time? Yes, Doug. Can you pull it up? Because I want to get. I want. I want to make sure I don't mess this up. This is one of the best, biggest giveaways they've done if you sign up for butcher box they will give you either two pounds of ground beef three pounds of chicken breasts or two pounds of salmon for free in every box that you get every month plus twenty dollars off 
This is that, in my opinion, is one of the best. Wow. One of our one of our influencer friends. I don't know who it was. I was on social media today or on Instagram today, and I saw them posting, and they posted like they just had a, a gang of beef. And they were talking about that, uh, you know, what are you doing to stock up for 2024 because of the direction that- Oh, the, God. Everything. I mean, there's some- there, <laughs> Hey, I was- off Which box you put together? A survival box. Uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Off air, off air, complete transparency. I was Doug and I were chopping up back and forth about, uh, you know, the, so investing in uh, Wagyu beef or Wagyu beef, however you pronounce it, right? So that there's, you can do that. You can own shares or own cattle. Now, do you think it's going to go up in value of because course. they're trying to, they're, they're attacking me Bro, so bad? You, what, do you, what do you think happens to the, the marijuana market Scarcity, when they make dude. marijuana illegal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just makes it what and why is it gone down in price so much? Because there's more competition. That's yeah. right. So you think the whole like, oh, it's bad for the environment, like all the propaganda about it is yeah, gonna that's increase not the going cost. away. They are really on a mission. It yeah. will increase the cost. Yeah. Because what they'll and one of the ways that they'll do it too, because it'll it do it in two ways. One, it'll create more demand for it, and then there'll be less and people low supply. And and low supply, less people that are providing it. And then also probably they'll probably increase regulation and and, and hoops that you gotta jump through in mm. order to even produce meat. Yep. So then you're gonna have people that do produce meat that now have to pay for this extra certification unless this, it puts them out of business then you lose your money well i mean yeah that's a possibility but yeah. I, do you really think that everybody's gonna go not eating meat no people will find a way and they'll pay more it'll mm. yeah. so this is a comp so th these are like shares in a company that's what you guys are looking at no or you, you could buy cattle you, you buy, could literally yeah, yeah buy for i think it was like ten thousand dollars and then you know, we get a certain amount of cattle and it's like 22 you yeah. get you get so a, you own the cows but they're own, being ra raised, raised and, taken yeah, care and of. so so it's like Ten thousand dollars, I think, and again, don't quote me on this because I was just like briefly reading it. But I think it's like ten thousand dollars, and and it gets you. Uh, I don't know how many cattle. I don't know if that's one or whatever. Then you got to pay for its feed for the next twenty. 21 to 22 months then when uh it's it's uh slaughtered yeah slaughtered then you they sell it sell it off and then and you then get the profit the net yeah you get the profit or you split it with them like well how do they make money they, there's a management fee right so oh. there's there is wow, a wow that's interesting very interesting so yeah. you make the profit off how much they sell it you give them a management fee that is so it's great. it's 60 percent profit before expenses and management now imagine feed for the cattle yeah. for the year yeah. and stuff like that that's going to chip away at it yeah but i mean 60 percent before that and then the management fees i don't know if they take a percentage of it or whatever but that those are some killer what? margins this yeah. is interesting where'd you it's, see that? it's really interesting robert kiyosaki so i saw i don't know if you did you see that he's making headlines right now yeah so, he's got some debt or something like that yeah it's so i should read to you so i send it over i always whenever i see like articles like this i always shoot it over to, to our good buddy chris nagibi because uh, to give me like read between the lines here and I sent it over to him and I'm like, hey, you read this yet? He goes, yeah, cute leveraging rhetoric of the bank hatred to gain market buy-in, but he doesn't have that with one bank due to his legal uh, lending limits it, it had to have it all. In other words, there's, there's a lot of uh, news around banks failing and stuff like that. Mm. And so the article is really written to try and just gain attraction attention oh, because but it's nothing because that's something that he always says like that's that's I've heard Robert Kiyosaki say that forever like uh, I'm never afraid because all all my I'm leveraged to the to the T with all these different banks right and you can only you can only leverage up to so much right so like you the only FDIC he insurance. talks about how to use how do you how to leverage uh, debt in order to make money well. right and and why he feels so confident in that is that the likelihood that we would ever allow you know, twenty different banks to get closed or shut down is is hard, is not going to happen. I mean, look what happened when right. when when we were the closest to that ever happening. What did we do? We bailed them that, out. That wow. would bring the, everything to a right. So anyway, wall. so he says that all the time, and supposedly, like an article came out that, that read his his total debt, which is like yeah. one point two billion. He's leveraged that, mm -hmm. right? So he has that much debt, and his thing is like, I'm not a, I'm not afraid because I'm you know, I'm attached to all these banks, and they're if the banks if I go down, then they go down. Like the, yeah. they can't they can't. So they let knew it'd get attention because of people's fear right now. Right, right, right. So that's really that's really. Mm -hmm. But anyways, that in that article, it also talked about all the places that he's invested in. I, I so I love to listen to uh, you know Rich Dad Radio, which is Robert Kiyosaki and Dave Ramsey uh, are two of my favorite people. Besides my buddy Chris, polar opposite approaches, Very, right? and, and that's why I like that. Like I, I I tell everybody that I am I. So why would I not take my own advice, right? Like I believe that. You should always do that. That's in fitness. That's in business. That's in investing. That's in everything. Like I love to take uh, 
find authorities that have counter opinions on something and that have a track record. Yes. That's proven. Yes. And, and listen to both. And, and I think Ramsey makes really good points about certain things. I think Kiyosaki makes good points about things. I love my buddy, Chris Nagibi, who, who talks a lot of business finance stuff. So anyways, that's why. And in his article, they were breaking down all the places of money. And I've always heard him talk about gold, silver. He's in crypto. He's, of course, real estate. He's all these places. But for the first time, I heard him say, they say, Beef. wife. Yeah. And so then I started searching it. I'm I down. It, I sent it over to Doug. Doug did a little bit of digging himself and then found like- I'll how, throw some chips in there. Yeah, yeah. I just think- And so if you believe in in the market that it's here to stay, it, it's our, it's been on the rise- for quite some time now. So now granted, uh, there's risk like anything, the cows could get mad cow disease and die or right, right, right. something yeah. like that could happen to them. So you well, there's all kinds of risk. Well, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Speaking of animals, um, did you hear about this longevity drug for dogs? What? That's what? Been under a clinical trial. That's like, they've, I don't know if they've proven exactly that it's like super effective, but it's really promising, I guess. And it's making its way to the next stage. Um, but basically it's, so it's it the the company's called Loyals, um, and it's L O Y dash zero zero one is it's an injectable based treatment that targets a growth in metabolism hormone called IGF one. So that's like wait, does it reduce IGF one? Um, I don't know. So IGF-1, well, here's here's I mean, most dogs die of cancer tumors. Yeah. So yeah, but something I, that would probably reduce so IGF one insulin like growth factor. We have it too. <clears throat> Um, when people take growth hormone, it's the IGF one that goes up that has the anabolic effects. Uh, it's an anabolic hormone, so it will fuel cancer that's already there, but it doesn't cause cancer. However, like you said, dogs are very prone to cancer. Yeah. And so maybe they're saying, let's block this. You know, and You know what? They but are. But that would make them more brittle they, too. They are, but don't you find right. that interesting that this is not more of a conversation that that's only recently. Oh, it's because, mm -hmm. come on. They yeah. fall, dogs eat a, in 100% processed food diet. Oh, yeah. 100%. But, yeah. but I mean, it wasn't like that 100 years ago. Like, there, there wasn't dogs getting cancer all over the place. Don't you find that? Maybe, was it? Maybe yeah. dog, dog, can you look, look up I dog mean, cancer been, rates over the years? I don't know. I wonder what the, what the yeah. data. Tumors, cancer, yeah. It's been, they've been riddled. Like, it, and again, yeah, it is. You can attribute a lot of that to the, to the feed, uh, for one thing, and then I mean I'm sure exercise is another component. There's like a lot of environmental factors. Set, I've, but I'm pretty sure I've I've seen a chart that literally follows the same as and humans. It shows that they're it's cancer right in line with you, like in, in humans. Oh, that's but weird. they speculate it's like eight to ten years like extension of life. What eight Can to ten more years? Yes. That's wow. What, that's what it said. What does it say, Doug? Yeah, so cancer is more common now in dogs. It's Versus been increasing. When? So it's kind of uh, mirroring what's going on with humans. Yep. Uh, happening at younger and younger ages as well. We're doing some shit, man. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff out that's there. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's like, how does that, I mean, I, we act like it's this massive riddle for humans, right? And it's like, well, we can't figure out what it well, is. Well, we're fatter, we're less active, and there are <laughs> there's a combination of chemicals that did not exist that we're exposed to a lot now that we were not humans were not exposed to yeah. just, you know, five, six decades ago, period. End of story. And they're getting shittier food than us. Terrible. Yeah. Dog food is pure processed. It'd be like if you ate cereal all day and that's how you ate. Yeah. So I actually think that why it mirrors the humans is because I think more and more people give their, give their human food to freaking the, that too. The, yeah. yeah. I and think it, scraps and yeah. Yeah. I think it's more because of that uh, and, and lack of exercise. So like that, that the animals aren't getting to mm -hmm. your, if you're, if your owner isn't exercising, your dog's probably not. You ever seen that mm -hmm. meme? <laughs> it just reminds me of this meme. It's got a picture of a wolf, you know, big ass, like muscular wolf. And the, and then one wolf's talking to the other wolf and he goes, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go try and make friends with those humans. Maybe they'll feed me. What's the worst that can happen? And then it goes <laughs> 200 <laughs> years like, later. He's yeah, like, oh, a like, chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This oh, is what we did to you. Oh, man. I can't breathe that. Run I'm back small. to Alaska. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, uh, you, you had this experience, Adam. Now I've experienced So I've drastic, drastically, excuse me, reduced and almost completely eliminated. I had one slip up. Completely eliminated cannabis. So I was using it on a relatively regular basis at night, and I stopped almost completely, except for, like I said, one slip up. And I used <sighs> Ned. Brain blend the other day. Mm. Oh, because my body now is sensitive. To I love their brain blend. Okay. So yeah. I liked it anyway. Even when I was using cannabis, I would notice, yeah. right? But I took the normal dose that I normally take, except now I must be more sensitive. So I took it. 45 minutes later, I was like, did I eat an edible? Like, what did I do? Right like, now. did I actually, <laughs> like, yeah, I really felt it. 
Yeah. Like really felt it. I, you know, I wonder why that's not something that they communicate more. Uh, and I, and I wonder, I'd love to hear from our audience who is not a, you know, marijuana per se user, but then uses their products. So my dad, so my parents yeah. use it. Yeah. My, my dad, my mom my, said the same thing. Okay. So both of my parents use the, the capsules, the, the little tiny gel caps. Mm -hmm. And my dad will take one, maybe two. Now one time he took four and he did not like it. He took, it was too strong. He took four and he's like, something's wrong. I don't, my dad's super sensitive to everything. Something's wrong. I don't feel good. And I'm like, well, yeah. how many did you take? He's like, four. I'm like, you probably had too many cannabinoids. You might be feeling like, a little bit yeah. stoned or whatever. <laughs> so one for him and he feels because he doesn't use cannabis. Yeah. But it's like the, like other CBD products, you, you don't feel. You yeah. take them. It's like, well, did I take anything? Yeah. I mean, you I know. feel Ned. I, I felt Ned even when I was smoking every day. And, but when I came off, I was super fascinated with like, oh, there's, oh, do the sleep there's the one? effects. You are going to sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you do the sleep one, you're go don't take it before driving. That's how strong it is. You take it and you're going to bed. That's yeah. Hundred like percent. They have, I think they, I think they, I, I don't know if we could talk about it, but I know they've got some new products coming out this year when we, yeah, they were at the I, Christmas party. I've been working out with, uh, working on it with them. Oh, are you, you are, I remember when yeah. you tried them. Well, I know. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. But we can't say what it is. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, yeah. where have you, I, okay. They've been, I obviously I've had an opportunity to try those. They've been in here and stuff like that. Are you, is that moving along? Yeah, or? it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't even know Speaking that. of th things that are, that I feel. So, uh, the peptide dihexa, mm. this was formulated originally for people with dementia and Alzheimer's. It is a peptide that is about seven to 10 times more potent than brain derived neurotropic factor. So BDNF, it's like miracle grow for the brain, right? It makes neurons uh, grow. It causes synapses to connect. Like you have a lot of this, your, your brain thinks faster. It's more moldable. You're less depressed. If you have low levels of it, more pain, more fatigue, more forgetfulness, et cetera. Right? So we're always trying to do things to raise BDNF, things like exercise, good diet, better sleep. When you're younger, you have more BDNF. Anyway, dihexa is like BDNF, except much stronger. Now I tried it before from our, our people at mphormones.com and they gave me a really low dose and I thought I felt it, but I'm like, whatever. They came back and like, try it again. We've been giving people this dose, much higher dose, and people are, are, are noticing. About five days in, for like, this is, this puts all the other nootropics to shame. Mm. Like, big time. You've, you've got some coming, right? I do. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm interested to see if I have that same response because- Did it, you both already try it? We did. I did. It was, combination. At, it was at a low dose. Plus, I was taking it, it with C-Max. Yeah. And I felt the C-Max. Didn't know if I felt the dihexa. Is, is the dihexa the red pills? Yeah. Does it say dihexa on I it? Think so. I think so. I think they were red pills. Let me see. Let me look at it. That's uh, not it. It's not? I don't. I didn't see red on the uh, inside. That's your birth yes, control. Yes, it is. Dihexa. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. And you're taking so, two of these? So, I no, I've, been, I've always took one, although they did say to take two the oh, last time. Oh, boy. Wait, yeah. how long have you been taking these? I mean, I'm stocked up on those. Okay, listen. I started with two and they told me I could titrate it up to three to four. The guy said oh. four is really high. If you have a day where you really need to concentrate, he says, I like two to three. So I did two for a while after day five or six, I was like, oh man, I'm on, I'm on fire. And I don't mean like a stimulant caffeine effect, like alive, uh, awake, oh, interesting. feel good, uh, mood lifted or whatever. I moved it up to three. And that's like fun. Oh, so I see. It. I took give it one. I took one this morning, and I have had t two, and I did have a good experience the, the time I took two before. So, oh, I'm doing two a day or three a day. And oh wow, that puts all the other nootropics to shame. Justin. Even the C Max to, okay, cool. to shame. Yeah, really. I, but yeah. it takes a second. It took me I, about five to seven days. See, I was on this high with C Max, and then yeah, it's starting to kind of like taper off. So I'm, I'm not getting as much of that like initial I'm like oh my god my memory recall I could so you know, I felt like it was all kind of coming back here's the biggest things I notice uh I am using words I haven't used in a long time <laughs> like you know you like you, you'll use a that word sounds funny. like you'll say a word Super, like earlier like earlier you said, fret. Yeah. you said don't you said don't fret yeah. right yeah. I can't say that, it right? yeah. but every once in a while don't you find yourself doing that you use a word yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. It. you impress so, yourself yeah, yeah. No, maybe not, but <laughs> <laughs> did that come out of me yeah, yeah. <laughs> did I just say ludicrous no so there's that then there's also memories of stuff. Makes when you I was think you kid. have Mensa. You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> have Weird. Mensa? What is it? It's a disease. You just have it because <laughs> yeah. you're at that level. Yeah, no. it's, it's the next level. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm i also having uh, memories. Like I'll remember things like, oh, yeah, when I was a kid, I did that. And this happened. And like faster recall. It's really interesting. 
Well, I can, really I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm the one that has the most head trauma, so <laughs> yes. I, I want to intervene. I mean, yeah, you should. That. I mean, based off of that, you should feel the the greatest effect. I would think on things like that, right? Well, so. yeah. It, it was it Doctor Parsley was talking about like um, psychedelics and things yeah. and like treatments, and so I've been. I mean, my ear perked up. Like, I, I definitely think at some point, like, it might make sense for me to. Um, you know, go down that rabbit hole. I know you played football for a long time and hit things with your head a lot, but what's, is there one time that you remember the most where you hit, you got hit and you look back and you go, that one, that one did some that shit. That one, that one changed things. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember one? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, what was yeah, it? Yeah, I was playing SoCal and I was on kick return. And cool. so how it works is like, if, if the ball's in front of you, you, you should go get the ball. You should go try and catch the ball. Mm -hmm. um, if it goes over your head, you got to let the guy behind you kind of field it. Right. And this is like the first time I, I was playing on um, kick return. And so I was just like, first of all, I did two things wrong. So I went for the ball, which got kicked over my head, but also too, I turned inside instead of turning outside after I caught the ball. And so as you're turning inside, like all of the, the people running at full sprint, are all condensing down into the middle. Oh, so you turn everybody into somebody. Else, yeah, so you want to be able to kind of like work your way to the outside of the sideline so you have open space uh, to run and you have blockers and, you know, everything's kind of set up for that. So there was no blocking set up for where I went. And so I turn in and then I got hit by like three guys at the same time right in my head. Ooh. And it literally like launched my cleats. Like I, I was decleated and I was just like, off like in la la land immediately and it, i was just like you know seeing things and i went to the sideline and i probably should have stopped playing you know you can't play kept playing <laughs> just got a got a, a a safety and like i actually made plays i got a couple sacks in that game went to the emergency room after i was done wow um because i was they, i did they did like the athletic trainer at the time should have been fired for this i mean let's be honest wow like, i should not have How been old on the you? field <laughs> I was uh, eight, not 18, I was 17. God, yeah. Damn, I'm such a mom. Yeah, now, a how, junior. <laughs> you just said something that I think it's actually, it would be a really, I wonder who would be the most qualified person to ask this. Maybe you have some perspective around it. Like how often do you think like major injuries or like, like, like wor the worst hit ever is a result of you fucked up? Like you, like you just admitted, right? Like I did two things wrong. Like yeah. how often do you think when someone gets hit or their bell rung really hard it's or they gotta get be hurt? A it's a personality thing, right? Like I'm the first to admit when I fucked up. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, of course, people are not going to admit it, but how yeah. often do you think it is? That, like, that the mess up is why you you got the injury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got to be high. A high majority. Yeah, yeah it's got to yeah. be high. Way high. Yeah, yeah, like in boxing, like hold your chin up. You're going to sleep. Keep it down. You know, I have a buddy who got. Yeah. He's I mean, I think, okay. Totally. I mean, who do you blame on the, the, the throw then? It's the quarterback's fault, right? Because there's times where a wide receiver gets gets lit up lit yeah. up because uh -huh. the because the quarterback threw it away that he, yeah well yeah he threw it he threw it and he would and then have to reach and extend yeah and, and it's across leaving him vulnerable oh. yeah so you do have to place a bit of blame on the quarterback yeah yeah so that's wow. kind of not that person so there's got to be some exceptions did you, to the role did you feel weird for a while after that yeah was it like headaches and oh, shit oh yeah so i was actually in class and and it was i'd have headaches randomly <laughs> and then it was just so hard for me to concentrate oh that's terrible i was like and i, I was like you know, I didn't think anything was wrong with me, obviously, because like back then it's like nobody even thought of that as a real injury. You know, they're just like, oh, just pinch right here. Like, oh, I yeah, pinch. that'll fix it. I used to pinch just to get the headaches to kind of like go away a little bit. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and this this mentality persisted even into my college career. So it wasn't like that was the, an isolated incident. <laughs> Um, so I'm really like coming back into like somewhat of a cognitive functioning, uh, state. Like I, honestly, it was like a haze that I think that's why it was such a grind for me to get through school. Uh, because like I literally like put myself in a position where I had like a learning disability after that. <laughs> wow. I mean, I might as well you wear a helmet terrible. in class. You did, yeah. you did get a safety afterwards. So you unlocked a superpower. I'm just, you know, <laughs> typical mom tireless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> typical. <laughs> So listen, not a mama's boy, listen, dude. Listen, if our friends at mphormones.com can hear, like, send him extra dihexa. Yeah, please, this, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let's, eat all of it. Let's hey, get this fixed. Hey, speaking of football, let's let's shout out our buddy who we had today. Oh yeah, what a treat that was. Love it. 
Oh, man. Great, was, great. What's his web? What's his? That was uh, such a fun interview for what's me. What's his page? Uh, is it Kula yeah. Sports Performance? Kula yes. Sports Performance. With a yeah. K. Yeah. So Kula Sports Instagram. Performance. Yeah. One of the best his athletic person, trainers. His personal one's Brian Kula. So he has a Brian Kula Instagram and then his Kula Sports Performance. So his personal one's Brian Kula in, on Instagram. But, um, you know, I we knew it, right? Like, I we get a lot of people, uh, of course, when, especially when we have someone like this. Oh, you got to interview so and so's trainer. Oh, we'll get this yeah. guy on the show. Everybody's got an opinion on who we should talk to, and like, you know, we're pretty particular about, especially when it comes to coaches and trainers who we want to talk to, right? Because oh, there's a lot of garbage. Out there. Yeah, it's selfishly, like if uh, you know, if we see somebody who we're really curious, like if they have a a, a training philosophy that is that like we go, oh, that's intriguing or that's interesting. I want to talk to that person. Or if you recommend somebody and I look at their stuff and I'm like, that's trash. I don't want to, yeah. <laughs> why am I going to bring them on the show so I could make no, them look he was, dumb he, or are we going to argue? Or he like, was amazing. But I remember when we first saw the stuff that he was doing with uh, Christian McCaffrey and I, I was like, oh, dude, this guy is, yeah. he's right in line with Smarzo. It's and so Plessinger refreshing and, yeah. to see it. Yeah. And of course, he's connected to them. Mm -hmm. Of course, they know each other and their friends. It's like, you know, it's like, that that community it is, a really is, small is, world. is is pretty small, and so what a treat to to talk to him today. All right, check this out. There are herbs called adaptogenic herbs, and what they do is they improve your body's ability to deal with stress. All right, what does that mean? Well, stress is what exercise is, and exercise tells your body to build muscle, get stronger, become more fit, burn more body fat. Thus, adaptogenic herbs improve your body's ability to adapt to exercise. By the way, the data shows this clearly. Well, check this out. There's a company called Stress Guardian or a company called Bioptimizers that makes a product called Stress Guardian that takes 14 of the best proven adaptogenic herbs, puts it in one supplement, you take it daily, and now suddenly your workouts don't feel as hard, you're stronger, you recover faster, and you get better results, period. Also, by the way, adaptogenic herbs also help with mental clarity because, as you know, Stress negatively affects your mental prowess. So this product, Stress Guardian, is one of the best on the market. Go check it out. Go to stressguardian.com forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Samantha from New York. Hi, Samantha. How can we help you? How are you doing? Oh my gosh. Hi, guys. This is so exciting. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, my face just got red. I've listened to... I'm good. How are you? Good, good. 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 I... um. I always hear people say that they're so nervous and every time I'm listening, I'm like, how could they be nervous? And then you sit up here and you're like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. <laughs> I, um, I started the email to you guys saying to the voices in my head every single day because you're, I'm literally like thinking of you guys almost 24 seven, whether it's I'm listening to the actual podcast or I'm following your programs or I'm thinking about, you know, what you say about food every meal. So it's really an honor to be here and thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Oh, Thank right you. On. I think about Justin every day too. Like that. <laughs> stop. Please stop. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me uncomfortable. Only when he showers. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what's, what's going cool. on, Samantha? Yeah. So I'm just going to go through a little bit of history um, about myself and I can go into my question. Um, so I know you guys have done a lot of episodes on back pain. Um, I've listened to almost all of them and I feel like I have a question that hasn't really been answered yet, um, but into my fitness history. So I've, I was a cheerleader for, at a very young age and I did that for about 10 years. And, um, I think I started at like five or six and I remember eventually we started throwing girls in the air and then having that, you know, having to catch them from very tall heights. And then sometimes if the stunt was done incorrectly, the girl's head. So I remember having back pain for the first time at about 12 years old. And I remember seeing a chiropractor for it. And then I don't really recall being in pain for the next 10 years. So the issue kind of resolved itself. So I turned to running for my main form of fitness until about four years ago when I got into HIT classes and I loved the intensity of HIT. I loved what it did for my body and my mental health. And it really taught me a lot about, you know, like different muscles and a lot more about fitness. Um, but of course, when I started doing HIT again, my back pain came back um, and it's been bad ever since. So because I didn't want to rely on classes and wanted to teach myself more about fitness, um, I start. That's when I, you know, stumbled across you guys and started doing a few of your programs. Um, I ran Maps Prime and Anabolic last year, and I'm currently doing Symmetry. Um, but my back pain is so inconsistent. Sometimes it's fine, other times it's the worst ever, and the pain travels. Um, I've been told I have scoliosis, and that I've been told that I don't. I've been told that I have sciatica. I've been told that I don't. Chiropractors didn't help. 
And I finally went to a doctor and got an x-ray and he said to try physical therapy, which is obviously, as we all know, just strengthening certain muscles. So I found that physical therapy, I thought it was going to be a very expensive option. Um, But the main thing is that I was going to have to stop all of other fitness um, if I was going to do physical therapy. And to me, that was just not an option. And um, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but I need to work out um, pretty intensely for like my mental health. Um, I even said at one point, I'd rather be in pain than lose the progress that I've made. I've fluctuated um, a lot with like weight and, you know, I've had eating disorders in the past. And so it's like my biggest fear to gain weight or to get out of shape, honestly. Um, So I've, I have heard you guys say that, you know, to take it slow and to go back the, you know, um, like plan a, and just like start over with your fitness. But to me, like that's, that just sounds so dreadful. Um, so I guess the question I'm asking, is there a universe where I can continue intense fitness while also healing my back and continuing to strength train by doing that? Do you think there is a possibility I could heal my back? Um, or it will potentially, would it potentially make it worse? And then also, are there other things I could be doing better, like using back support, priming more, certain movements, avoiding certain movements, like static stretches um, and stuff like that? Less um, running and hit for sure. Yeah. This is going to be a bit of a complex yeah, uh, yeah. question and answer. So let me answer the first. Uh, <clears throat> let, me, let me talk about kind of the root mm-hmm. thing that I say. I, I think also we feel should, like you know the answer is coming. Yeah, that we should identify. Okay. So, and by the way, I can... Mm-hmm. Um, what you're saying resonates very strongly with me. So I can really relate. Okay. I have the same struggles when it comes to uh, exercise and and body and stuff like that. And the challenge is from the outside when I'm able, and I'm not always able to do this, but when I'm able to step outside, there's a false um, alternative that you've created for yourself. And the, the, the false alternative is this, either I work on fixing my back pain or and lose all my fitness progress, or I continue to move forward, deal with the pain and stay fit. Now, let me tell you why that's false. It's false because if you don't deal with the back pain, then you'll get none of it. So in other words, the real, the real options are this, fix the back pain, or you'll not be able to work out anymore at some point at all. And that's, that's definitely down the line if you continue down that path. Now, I know that sounds bleak, so I think there may be some options for how we can kind of maybe go in the middle a little bit. Um, I need a little more information on your back pain. Uh, so you've got you got imaged, so there's no disc issues, there's no structural issues. Uh, there's there been, go ahead. Was, sorry, there's some, um, it didn't seem too concerning at the time, but potential disc issues in the future, um, like I said, it was like, potentially arthritis in my lower back down the line and first try physical therapy. And if not, then we'll reconsider surgery. Um, but I think what made me a, like kind of put that aside and not take it as a big concern is that it's so inconsistent. Like some days I can rip through PRs and some days yeah. I can't even bend over to like, you yeah. know, pick something up. So I was like, it must be something I'm doing like a movement I'm doing. It's you muscular. Know? Mm-hmm. It's muscular. Getting inflamed. Yeah, it doesn't sound like um, a structural issue, okay? And then when they say, oh, potentially, that doesn't mean anything um, n- unless it's actually something you can see. Um, so it's probably muscular. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the, mo- the most common areas that or muscles that would cause what you're describing, I'm not saying this is exactly what it is, but a majority of the time, it's either psoas. So there's a muscle called the psoas. It starts with a P, so it's P-S-O-A-S iliopsoas. This is a hip flexor that goes through kind of through the body and attaches at the lower back. And when it gets inflamed at the insertion by the spine, it's low back pain. Okay. So there's that. Then there's another muscle called the quadratus lumborum, the QL, which is another muscle that attaches uh, on, on the side of the low back, which is kind of where the psoas attaches as well. And when that gets inflamed, then you get low back pain. And the reason why it sounds like it's muscular is because of what you said. Sometimes you feel like your back's fine. And then other times it's like, oh my God, you know, what happened? Can you identify any exercises that are that are more likely to cause this problem? I mean, almost always if I do a lower body exercise, but then sometimes I'll do a deadlift and feel fine. And it's not until later in the workout when I do 
um, like a chest press that I'll start to really feel the pain. Or sometimes the other day I felt fine the whole workout, but then when I did a pigeon pose at the end, a static stretch, it, it like hurt so bad. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. There's a little lateral stability. Um, I don't know. So I don't know if I'm like solidifying the pain that's already there. Once I stretch or once the workout's over, I really can't pinpoint it. Okay. So what might be happening is, uh, there's some instability going on. And once your body kind of identifies this, the muscle seizes up and it starts to feel painful. And that can take uh, an hour. It could happen the next day. Symmetry is the right program. So I she's got the right program. I would say, so what are you doing now? What's your workout look like? Symmetry, she said. That's what you, how long have you been following so, yeah. symmetry? Yeah, I'm in phase three right now. So it's actually starting to be a little bit more, um, like, you know, double, uh, less unilateral. Um, so I think I did, um, I'm still doing walking lunges, even the walking lunges hurt. There were a lot of things in phase two that felt different. It didn't heal me, but I was like, oh, this is a new feeling. Hmm. Um, like, you know, some of the single leg stuff that we did, um, make keeper. Have you done so, any you know, but, but the pain hasn't gone away. Have it. I've, I do windmills, so I've created my own prime based on prime that mm -hmm. I do before every workout, and I've added windmills. I'm kind of finessing that to see what hurts and what doesn't. Right. I've yes. tried Are doing, you restricted um, in that you know, glute bridges. Um, in the windmills, yeah, they feel a little tight, but I think for the average person, I'm okay. I'm okay, but it definitely is not. It's a little painful. Um, I did do froggers, and that's where I felt some really like a lot of tightness in my hips. Um, okay. No so matter it's leading me, I believe it's hip. No matter ability. what advice we give you today, I definitely want to get you in the forum so we can actually see you move because right now I know we're, we're just we're all, know, we're we're guessing and we're trying to figure some things yeah. out. I do feel like though we can get to the bottom of this. It's, it's definitely muscular and it's definitely something that we're probably there's, there's yeah. weakness and instability somewhere. And I do think that we can get to the bottom of it. Going back to Sal's point there, there very much so is a way for us to strength train, address this, still yeah, keep your gains or get, yeah, there's, there's, but I, I, I do, we have to address your, um, uh, dare I say addiction to intensity, the running right. and hit is not serving you no, at no, all, and, no, you at me. all. I mean, at all. It's yeah. not, it's especially your situation. Here's, here's it's just why it's going to get worse and worse and worse if you maintain that kind of mentality. And yeah. even if you are, you, you may be doing, you don't even realize it, you might have been doing symmetry and actually making some good progress in the right direction. But then your hit, yeah. if you're in, if you're doing any sort of hit and uh, running could be setting it right back. So you're, you don't, you're not even letting yourself yeah. apply an adequate rest the, periods yeah. in between exercises. I'm actually not. I'm not doing hit. Good. Oh, good. Um, I'm just sticking strictly to, Sorry, to symmetry right now. Good. What, so, what about running? Are you running? No, I've been doing uh, the Stairmaster for cardio and then the elliptical because it's not as hard on my back. Okay, so the enemy of uh, stability-based issues is fatigue because when you, have a, 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 when you have a recruitment pattern that is not serving you, the second you get tired, you're going to revert back to your old re recruitment pattern. I don't care how, how focused you are on perfect form or whatever, it's going to go back to that. So off the top of my head, okay, if you were my client, now this could change as I train you, but off the top of my head, I would limit, I would eliminate all lower body exercises and have you do the sled entirely. So forward drives, slow and controlled, pulling back, slow and controlled, and lateral walking, slow and controlled. And that would be it. That's all I would do for the lower body until we solve this issue. I wouldn't do unilateral you know, exercise. I wouldn't do bilateral exercise. I wouldn't do anything else. Now the sled is going to be very safe and the lateral drives and drag backs and pushing forward is going to work the, the, the stability of the core in a much safer way because there's no eccentric part of the you see all the contraction without the impact, you know, there that's going to inflame your, your, uh, supporting muscles. Yeah. So you could literally do your upper body stuff. Then when it comes to lower body, you push the sled, pull the sled, lateral, you know, karaoke or lateral, you know, walking. Two, 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 two blocks. Two blocking, two blocking, and that's it. Great. And that's it. I like the sled because even with two blocking, that's more hit. But if I'm using the sled and I have the, I have it attached here at my upper body, it's going to involve some of my lateral stability. Mm -hmm. And then for core, I would do rotation exercises first. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, and I mean, that would be a majority of it. And then I, mean, I love that you're priming anti rotation. I love that she's priming with the windmill. That's good. Yes. Keep that in there. Yep. Yeah. Now, if you really want to solve this, 
I would find a really good, like, again, if you were my client. Bro, we're going to get her in the forum, Dr. Brink's in there. There you go. Yeah, get in the forum, post videos of you doing. Tag Dr. Brink. Yeah, I'd love to see a squat. I'd love to see a windmill. Um, and and viewing from the side, front, and, and back, like put that in the forum, tag us, tag Dr. Brink, and then together we'll probably be able to pinpoint what's going on better than us kind of guessing right now. Yeah, you yeah. you need a really good movement specialist to to work with you. Uh, that's how this will work. And a good, okay. a good movement specialist will be able to make it, you know, incorporate a workout. The reason why physical therapists tell you to stop working out is because 99.9% .9 of the time, people completely erase the work that the physical therapist did with their crappy workouts. So that's just hundred percent. So physical therapist is better off saying, don't do anything. Just come see me. And I totally get that. So, but a good movement specialist will be able to say, here's your workout. And here's what you can do. Yes. Yeah. Which you need to know. Okay. I mean, that's amazing. The form sounds great. Um, and I have like one on the sled note, another quick question, if you guys don't mind sure. If you have time. Sure. Okay. So I guess running through these programs, I do live in New York City and I have a very packed gym and there's limited floor space, there's limited cables. So as far as like following a program verbatim, and I don't know if you've answered this yet or not, but can I go off course and I kind of only have the sled when it's available, when someone's, you know, stopped using it and there's only one cable machine. So like right now following symmetry, sometimes I'll be at the gym for so long waiting for that to become available. It's like how much room can I kind of like maneuver around and still get like the same benefits? Like, can I, and you're, can, can I go off course a little bit if it means saving me time? With what we're talking about, upper body, who cares? Okay. Yes, that's fine. But yeah. lower body, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I, what I don't want you to do is There's come and go like, oh, sled's not available. I guess I'll do uh, walking dumbbell lunges. Or all. That's now not I'm, the same. Not even close. Yeah. So you, we can't mm -hmm. just replace But you can out. you can start your workout and then, oh, the sled's available. I'm going to go over there. That's exactly that. how I do it. Yeah. What I would do is I'd keep my eye on it, okay. do all, all yeah, the other movements. Said, Jump cool. on it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. That answers that. Yeah. You Thank you. It. Yeah. No problem. Um, okay. Well, yeah. I hope I can get to the bottom of this. Thanks for... Doug, um, being Doug, there again, you guys are a huge inspiration. Doug's going to give you access. He'll send you over a link or whatever to get to, into the forum. Make sure you get in there. Like I said, I would love to see uh, a squat, a body weight squat. You don't need to load the bar or anything like that. Body weight squat, uh, uh, front side back view, and then a windmill. Tag us, tag Dr. Brink. Um, and he may ask for some other okay. stuff. but Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that'll get us started. Okay. All right, Samantha. Thank Thanks you so much. I yeah, appreciate we, it. Have yeah, a good we day. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks. You know, uh, situations like this, and people listening are like, oh man, that sounds really complicated and tough. And there are situations like that. I've run into those. Like, you know, I had a, a, a situation where I had a client who had this back pain. It took us, it took us four months to figure out. And what it ended up being was weak hip flexors, which is almost never the case. Right. That's why it was so hard to figure out. But typically, usually what the issue is, is that the person is, refuses to stop doing what's causing the problem yeah. or doesn't, they're, they're so scared to change yeah. to do something That's else. That's why I made the point yeah. about that. Because I, I wouldn't be surprised if she was heading down the right path in some areas, mm -hmm. you know, doing things like the windmill yeah. and doing and unilateral work. And intensified each one of them yeah. like, too much. Yeah. yeah. Or, or like, or like even if, you know, the option was, hey, do physical therapy for eight weeks and don't do anything else. That would probably work. And yeah, you'll go backwards a little bit with your strength and your performance. Yeah. And I get it. I mean, there's a better way. Like you could work with, like I said, a movement specialist, but that would probably work. Physical therapists are amazing sure. at solving a lot of these problems. But, you know, you just don't. I, I was that guy, by the way. I remember I hurt my shoulder. Physical therapist is like, you got to stop jujitsu. You got to stop working out. Otherwise, you're going to need to get your AC joint uh, operated on. And so what did I do? Cortisone shot, kept training. And I had to get surgery. So I get it. I get I get the challenge. But had I listened, right. I probably wouldn't have had to get the surgery. Our next caller is Dan from Pennsylvania. Dan, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, how are you? Thanks for taking my question. You got it. Um, so uh, every trainer, doctor, physical therapist says you got to get your eight hours every night. Um, for me, getting eight hours in one shot is just not possible with my lifestyle. I work uh, overnights. I work 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mm, five wow. days a week. I got three kids. My wife works. So typically what my sleep looks like is I'm home in bed by 7 and I'm up around anywhere between 11 and 12 and doing whatever responsibilities I have for that day, take care of my daughter, um, 
And I typically will grab an hour or two if my daughter lets me a little more um, before I go to work. I know you've talked about biphasic sleep briefly before. I've, I've done some research on it. Some say it's better than getting it at once. I don't, I don't know if that's true. Um, just say what your thoughts are of how I can try to maximize that and still be able to build muscle, burn fat, and still, you know, reach whatever goals I may have. So, all right, let me get this straight. So you start out with, what is that? Four or five hours of sleep? About, yeah. And then you get maybe another hour or two? Yeah, typically. I try, try to get two hours. So a grand total, so of, a grand total six of six. To six to seven. Six to seven, but broken up uh, somewhere in the middle there? Correct. It's feasible. Yeah, so... Um, you know, what's interesting on the, 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 well, the data on sleep is pretty clear. However, there are some interesting variants between individuals. Um, they find some people are night owls. Other people are morning people. There does seem to be some research that shows that some people are better biphasic. They think this may have an evolutionary, um, root in the sense that, you know, somebody had to stay awake when everybody was sleeping to make sure predators had come around the and night watchers, yeah. they were kind of staggered sleeping so that's, you know, someone was always awake, but for the most part, you're looking at a grand total of eight for most people. So you're in a bad situation. So, you know, the question is, how do I make, how do I make the best of a bad situation? All the advice we give around sleep would apply for you. Blacked out room, blue light blocking glasses. And in fact, if I were you, I would wear the, they may, and they look silly, but if you really want to maximize your sleep, an hour before you're going to go to bed, they make some that are amber colored. So they're like red lenses and they block most light except for red light. And they close up at the top and the bottom. So they don't let light in from the top or the bottom. They're the most effective ones you're going to wear. I would wear them an hour before bed. I would have no food a couple hours before going to sleep. Of course, blacked out room. Uh, have the room be cool. You can use something like eight sleep. So eight sleep is, you know, of all the devices and, and things I've seen um, on the market, besides just being healthy, there is nothing that I've seen that comes close to this because it uses uh, AI to monitor your sleep and then it customizes temperature adjustments according to what helps you sleep the best. And so it, based on the current research knows, you know, different types of sleep, how to maximize those. Okay, we're finding that 64 degrees at this time, 67 degrees at this time before he wakes or whatever. And it, it takes about a week to figure this out. And then it's on its own and it will maximize your sleep uh, more than any other, I don't know, hack yeah. or electronic device. But other than the things that you've probably heard us talk about, there's not a lot yeah. else you can do. Like I mean, avoiding caffeine. All the interventions apply here. Yeah. The, the other thing would be, I mean, obviously, because part of this question, too, is that you, you want to optimize, you know, building muscle, losing body fat. I don't know what you're doing training program wise right now, but the, I mean, MAPS 15 is for you for yep, sure. Yep. Uh, that's you, you. You probably are not in a position to be doing a like a MAPS aesthetic type of program where it's an hour, 20 minute type of workout three to four days out of the week. So what are you doing right now? Um. So I, I actually talked to you guys almost two years ago. Exactly. I don't, you, I don't, you probably don't remember. It was, uh, I actually have about 30 to 45 minutes of a break at work okay. where I can, so I, I was taking half of my hour workout and I can get it in there. We have a pretty decent gym right where I, where, where I work, That's I can great. get 30 oh, minutes and then I get another 30. Um, what I'm doing right now, I've done aesthetic twice. I've done strong. I've done anabolic. I did, I did maps 15, which ended up turning, into maps 30 maps 35 it's just because i'm I, I do too much um r right now what i'm doing is i have no ass so <laughs> i'm doing uh, it's just i have not so I'm, I'm trying to do brett Contreras 36 sets of glutes so i i, I took anabolic and i split it into uh, upper lower upper lower upper lower and i added some stuff on the lower um to try and to try and get Dan, a, a so, butt. Get Dan, each pump. If this is your normal sleep schedule, 
Less is more. Yeah. You're not going to get better results with more. You're going to get better results we can, with less. We can address the ass thing, too, by the way. like This is like my... I'm going to give you a generic prescription I want you to follow. Two lifts every day. That's it. And you can make three or four days out of the week. Actually, you can do four days of the week, those hip thrusts. So make hip thrusts one, one of those... One of the two, exercises. Yeah, one of those exercises. So you're heavily glute-focused, and that'll, that'll, that'll work towards your goal. But I, I only want you doing two lifts. Two lifts a day. That's like maps. Just just get maps fifteen and modify it to throw. You know, replace yeah. all the exercises. Yeah. Every time there's lower body stuff, throw in the Listen, hip thrust. You got to understand, Dan. It's not. Don't think of it like, oh man, this is the kind of workout I have to settle for. That's not what it is. It's based on my lifestyle. This is the kind of workout that's going to give me the best results. That's right. right. That's right. So, like, more than that is not going to get you better better results. If anything, you're probably hampering your progress. I also see up here that you're on TRT. Yeah. Uh, and you're on 150 milligrams a week, which is on the upper end. However, um, you know, depending on who you're working with and your symptoms and how you feel or whatever, uh, you know, they can go up, up, they can even go up even higher, which some people would say is TRT plus and it's whatever. Like, uh, if, if you're noticing, I, I, go ahead. I've been trying, I've been trying to get my, my urologist to bump me and he, he doesn't seem like he wants to. <laughs> I'll yeah. do a thousand if you'll write the prescription for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, you could go, you could try finding a different doc. Go through mind pump hormones. Yeah, you can go to mphormones.com, see what they'll they'll, they'll put you on. I, I, go ahead. I, I've wanted to go through there for also about trying to get more sleep or trying to peptides. I was, I, I, there's, there's probably a lot of things that I, they can help me with um, mm -hmm. more than just the TRT. Yeah, there's. Um, 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 there's a peptide. It's called deep sleep inducing peptide. Um, I think that's what it's called. DSIP. Maybe Doug can look it up. I didn't know that. I so I tried it. Really? Yeah. When I when my when my youngest was a baby and sleep was just really bad, I tried it and it's wild. <laughs> like I would take it. Yeah. No, it doesn't knock you out. You you don't. It's not like it makes you all tired. You just take it, go to bed, and I'd wake up after four hours and I'd feel like I got six. Or something oh, like wow. that. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Was yeah. So it's called, I think it's called deep sleep inducing. Yep. It is D S I P. You can look it up. It's pretty interesting. I, stuff. I, I absolutely. Well, that's the first I've heard of that. That sounds exactly. It's the first I heard of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, down the road. I'm, I, I'm looking for. Yeah. I have the, I have the luxury of working with, you know, mphormones.com and they give me whatever I want, you know, so what that's good or bad. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing necessarily. <laughs> we don't really know everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did tell you guys it was on the podcast. No, did, did you know that? Did you know that? I did not know that. I said it on the podcast. I would have wanted to try it. No, yeah, I totally. said it on the podcast. I don't remember. All of us are like, damn, I want to try it. all of them. I'm still on their side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I haven't heard of that, that either. Yeah. So there was another peptide called Extreme Muscle Growth. Uh, <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, Build more muscle than your friends. There's one called like Hulk peptide. Super podcaster like, yeah, peptide I've been taking. <laughs> no, so, uh, so you know, I would talk to them because there are peptides. They're not going to replace good sleep, okay? But they can help with the, the, the cumulative damage that poor sleep can have on the body. Um, and they can, they can make a difference. I've noticed a difference, uh, with some of those. So I would talk to them, but what I said about eight sleep, look it up. Nothing's going to beat better sleep. So the idea is I can't get more sleep. So how can I make the sleep that I get as Increase good as possible? Increase the quality as much as possible. Cause here's the deal, Dan, there's a lot of people that get eight hours of sleep, but it's shitty sleep. Uh, so it doesn't always, it's not always just the time. It's also the quality. And I'm sure you've already noticed this. You've probably had some six hours of sleep where you're like, well, I feel way better. So really learning to maximize that. So the, the, the amber glasses, eight sleep, all the other stuff we talk about, and then see if you could talk to mphormones.com and, and, you know, maybe changing some and, stuff. And around. follow a MAPS 15 type of protocol yeah. and you can just modify it. So, it, you know, if the, if the, the glutes are a primary focus, all I would do is, basically make uh this the staple hip thrust so anytime you do lower body stuff it would be primarily driven around hip thrust so you can ch interchange some of the lower body exercises for that so yeah. but that protocol is is better suited for where you're at in your life right now totally and, totally. and just because you feel like you can do more does not mean that's better for you or it's more optimal and in fact it could be hindering some of your results. So trust the process, scale back a bit. Do you have I do, maps of I do. Yeah, I have almost like? all of them. I even out of uh, 
morbid curiosity got maps ped which is i don't i'll never do i'll never do that God damn. <laughs> yeah. are you in the, are you in the forum we're, dan we're removing that from your library <laughs> yeah. are you in the I'm not, i don't i don't have facebook uh, uh okay all right yeah. we'll can your i, mind. We'll can I you ask a very stupid question here. about my squat form um my yeah, when i'm standing ahead. just my normal stance my right foot is about five to eight degrees further out than my left yeah. should i be squatting what my natural stance yeah. is or should i be making my feet no no not unless you have a longer leg do you have, do you have has anybody ever identified no, no, it's just my, i don't know other? if it's in my ankle or my knee or my hip but my right foot is it just it's just when I lift the bar up and I take a step back, I can see in the mirror my right foot is further out than my left. So it's a so you're like, like offset. No, 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 like this. Like this. Or it's is it turned out? It's yeah, it's yeah, turned out. Or my or yeah. So you can either tightness issue. Or or you could either a make the other foot match. Yes, that's or what you, you that's can what make you the, do immediately. Yeah, right now. I would make the other foot match the okay. turned out foot. Yeah. So for yeah. now match it okay so whatever the, the the right and by the way pay attention because if you okay. already have that naturally standing still when you squat i bet it opens it up probably even more. turns yeah. so yeah it probably opens up even more so that's normally what happens if you have like a slight external rotation you go down into the squat at the bottom of the squat you'll see your foot wanting to slide out even more, more yeah. find okay. where it's most Good. comfortable thank at you. the bottom of your squat and match that on the left side for now and yeah thank you very a, much stability issue. hip stuff and everything going on later on but that that'll at least solve it for right now you got it man thanks right. for calling in brother all right dan you got it the whole foot turning out thing is weird because you know when Adam's mad how he turns his foot out and puts his hands on his hips? <laughs> that's mm. fucking weird. Yeah. You yeah. guys, um, <laughs> boy, that's tough. Yeah. You know, uh, it's tough because- I mean, it's one of the toughest bro, things. You have someone with night shifts, I, kids. <laughs> the, data on, oh my God. the data on night shift, I'm, I'm going to scare everybody right now that does this. It's, it's a like major, toxic. It's a major cancer risk, heart disease risk, mortality risk, like- I always feel if bad, you, like I'm if, giving bad news, you know, like like a death sentence. It just sucks. Well, man. okay, so it, you have to unpack that a little bit, so we don't scare the shit out of everybody that's a night. It's it's the stress that it causes on the body. So that being said, when you are running the rest of your life, it should be a your primary focus should be reducing stress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. It's just a it's a low level constant stress that your body is always in yep. because it's never yep. getting optimal sleep. Yep. Therefore. Your workout, the things you choose to do on your free time should be things that are going to bring you out of that, like like bring down the stress level. So he like yeah. that's going why your natural you guys that's why his training has got to be the bro, other direction. Yeah. He bro, can't be he needs all the interventions back, possible. Back when I had my studio and we would do these like hormone tests, these uh, what are called Dutch tests, where uh -huh. they test your hormones all day long on ER. That's different nurses, than Dutch oven. Yeah. Not a Dutch oven. <laughs> Dutch oven. <laughs> We're gonna do a Dutch oven real quick. Yeah. Here's Justin. No, we would do a, a Dutch test and we would test ER doctors and nurses. Mm -hmm. You should have seen the hormone profiles. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was insane. They were running off cortisol. It was crazy. My wife did graveyards. Yeah. We, it, it was, it was so bad. Cause like you can never get good sleep. Never. Like, even during the day. Like, nope. so yeah, I, I, I definitely feel for these people. Our next caller is Dennis from Germany. Dennis, what's going on? Dennis, can I help what's you? up, man? Hey, hey guys. Uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to ask the question. So uh, I very much uh, like your podcast and have been listening to it for the last uh, six months or so. And I recently bought an RGB bundle. I used to be doing a push-pull split uh, four times a week. And now I have a little bit of a hard time convincing myself that there is enough volume, for example, just two back focus pull-ups in phase one, so in current plan, I do a minimum of 10 sets uh, per muscle group per week, like vertical push, horizontal uh, pulls, bench presses, and so on. And uh, my background is I'm 40 years old. I'm a software developer and manager. Took my health seriously in the last four or five years when I dropped from 120 kilogram to unhealthy unhealthy 65 and now settling around 95 kilogram and perhaps you can help my ratio to better understand the uh, anabolic and performance and build trust in the program so i guess it's a little bit of a paralysis by analysis on my side <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. you know the, the 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 there's two 
two things to consider whenever you're looking at um, a program that lowers the volume or, or, or appears to be at a lower level than what you were doing before. And that's, that's number one, most people do too much anyway. Uh, number two, actually there's three things. Number yeah. two, the amount of volume that is required to maintain what you've built is far lower than what was required to get what you've built. And that's good because if it is lower volume to build, at the very least, you're not going to lose anything. Okay, so that maybe will make you feel a little comfortable. And then the third thing is, the only way to know is to do it and see if you're getting stronger. If by week three or four, you don't see strength gains, okay, well then try increasing the volume, see what happens. But typically what happens, typically what happens, especially in phase one, is after week two, week three, people are stronger. And then you know for sure this is working. And what you don't want to do at that point is add more and think, well, if I do more, maybe I'll get even stronger. Um, that's that's typically the wrong answer. So I'd say just try it. Yeah, Dennis, this uh, you're going to see in RGBB is the original three programs that we created. And we created them with the intent of following them in, in order. And the volume increase is built into the programs. Yeah. So it, anabolic would be considered the lowest volume of, of the three and then performance, it increases. And then in aesthetic, it really increases. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get through all programs, and so we are progressively overloading through sets and reps and total volume over the course of all three programs. But what you're going to find is a lot of times, like Sal was saying, there's clients that think that this is not enough. And then they find they're getting more results by scaling back and then what we've done in those programs is we've appropriately scaled you up, I think, the right way, and more people get results by just falling into a T. Now, that being said, we always tell people that, listen, uh, everyone is an individual. There are certain people that can handle more volume or respond better with higher volume. But the one thing we always ask clients is, like, just trust the process one time for us go all the way through and then we can come back and modify and then i'm a i'm a big fan of hey run it through the three programs then when you come back around the second time dennis add some things and then see yeah. if you get better results or worse and what happens more often than not is people think that because they can handle more that that is a sign that that's better for them and that's not necessarily true just because your body can handle it doesn't mean it's what's optimal for the most amount of results. Also, uh, if you look at it more as like a different animal completely in terms of like your mindset going in towards like that specific phase. Like, so for me, like I want to like crank the intensity and the focus uh, when I'm lifting specifically knowing that I have less volume. So that way I maximize my benefit of that uh, exclusively. And so if, if you have that shift mentally, it's going to play a lot better in terms of your results uh, as well. Very yeah. Cool. And, and, you know, look, th there was, let me think, I think it was, uh, I want to say maybe 12 years ago, they did this survey of top strength and conditioning coaches. And I mean, some of the, some of the biggest names you can think of. And they asked all of them and they said, what is the best split for most people for results? And they said, 85% of people will get the best results on a full body split, full body, three days a week workout is going to give most people the best results. When I switched to MAPS Anabolic, this was already after having trained for well over a decade or more on my own. I switched to MAPS Anabolic. I stopped training to failure so often. The volume went down, and I was I was in disbelief over the progress I was getting. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to be for everybody, but I, would, I could confidently say 9 out of 10 people will get better results training this way. And then there's 1 out of 10 people that get better results with the extreme workouts. But you typically know if you're one of those people, you're probably this super high level athlete. You're always the strongest guy in the room. You never needed to work out to be the biggest person. And that's super rare. A lot of people think that they're that person. Like, oh, I'm that one out of 10. No, you're probably not. You're probably the nine out of 10 that'll get better. But the only way you'll know is by trying it. Yeah. And you'll know pretty quick. Within three to four weeks, you'll have your answer. Here's what, what, here's what I'll guarantee you. You're not going to go back no, backwards. No. I will guarantee that it's it's a matter of what like, and and Justin brought up a really good point. Like this is when you take somebody who is and I I can relate to this right. I also was very I trained very high volume, very bodybuilder esque. I loved push pull uh, legs type of split. Switching to a full body was a total different mind shift. And it's like oh normally I'm used to getting you know I got at least eight to 10 sets, I get to work on that same body part where now, now I only get three or four and I'm, at, I'm done with that body part. So 
there was there's two things that I had to one I had to let go of I was always chasing this kind of pump feel you know because that like that was like the results it's like that's not giving me the results and then the other thing was learning to maximize those three sets is like going into it like listen I'm gonna prime warm up and I've only got three sets at this and really getting in after and getting after it for those three sets and then moving on and it, it, it once you make that shift you commit to it trust the process i promise you you won't go backwards it's literally a matter of don't. are you going to see more progress than you've ever seen or is it going to be relatively yeah. similar and don't uh, don't skip the trigger sessions if you're if you're like i need volume the trigger sessions add a little bit of that volume don't skip those it's three times a day on the off days okay do you get that okay yeah excellent all right dennis and you have the rgb already um, why don't we, forum? why don't we put them in the forum? Yes, so correct. Can, let's put you in the forum so we could, uh, track your progress. Yeah. yeah thank I, you. I want to, uh, much appreciated. I want to hear from you after you get through anabolic. I, I'm, yeah. I'm really, give us an update. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll do so. You got it, man. Thanks. All right. All right, Dennis. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for covering my question and have a good time. No problem. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so you know, okay, so this is what's cool is that we're, we've now been selling Maps Anabolic and other programs for uh, eight out of the nine years we've been on air, roughly. Uh -huh. Hundreds of thousands of programs. So we now have a data set right. of a large of test subjects, test, a large sur you know, uh, survey size of people who followed our programs. The program that is repeated the most. And the program that continues to get the the best uh, reviews in terms of consistency, results, that's the one I always go back to. By the way, not making it the best program, just being making it the one that's most appropriate for most people most of the time is Maps Anabolic. And that's the one that people are always like, you know it's funny? not enough volume. You know what's even funnier? Uh -huh. Is that that's 100% correct. And there's one that's slowly creeping up and starting to get close to rivaling that. And we haven't had it for that long. Maps 15. Maps 15. The mm -hmm. lowest volume. The irony. I know. Yeah, like, I know. It's hilarious. We're just scaling people down. Yeah. And yeah, because it, it, it works. Well, it 100% works. Sal said something that I wanted to correct because I don't think it's true. I don't think most people overtrain. Most people don't fucking move. Most people aren't well, doing Well, what enough. I mean is most people I know that you, work I know out you, a lot. I know what you meant, yeah, but yeah, I wanted yeah, to yeah. I want to say yeah, you're right. say something because I know people, there's going to be someone who's like, oh, that's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Oh, well, the whole world wouldn't be obese. If sure, sure. Sure. It's most people don't overtrain, right. but then there, you really have two ends of the spectrum of the people that do work out. Correct. Yeah. And the people that do work out, then especially the ones that like to work out, do too much. Yeah. yeah. They and they and they well, think it promotes it, more consistency, really. And they think it's like everything else in their life. Whereas if they put more effort towards or they work harder at, they'll get more results. And it doesn't work that Look, way. Look, literally, not this, with science. This is the story for me. I followed every. I trained super hard, super intense, lots of volume. Had my own gym, worked in gyms, had access to equipment, overdid everything. Didn't realize it. Then I went back to looking at the routines of the uh, the bodybuilders of the bronze era. Everybody did full bodies before steroids even invented. Read a book called Dinosaur Training. He advocated for the same thing, and I I took a leap of faith and I said I'm going to give this a shot. And I remember the first workout. I was like okay, this will be a week off is what's going to be because there's no way. <laughs> I did the second workout, two, you know, not that took the day off the next day, did it again. Huh, am I stronger already? By the third workout that week, I was stronger. And then I was like, something weird is happening here. And that was the birth of, of the whole program. Yep. Look, if you love the show, do this. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out the free guides we just added. Free fitness guides. We're going to help you out. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam.